Coming up on today's show, Audi kills the R8 e-tron because of low demand, there's a war brewing against Tesla's autopilot, and an all-electric helicopter takes to the sky for the first time. These stories and more next on 10. Like all our content, today's show is only possible thanks to the kind donations of viewers like you. Head to www.patreon.com forward slash transport evolved to find out how you can make your own donation today to keep us independent and impartial. And if you're already donating, thanks for your continued support. It's Friday, October 14th, 2016. I'm Nikki Gordon Bloomfield, and we're starting today's show with news that Tesla seems to be on target to delivering the 80,000 to 90,000 cars it said it would this year after an incredibly productive third quarter. Back at the start of this year, Tesla CEO Elon Musk had promised Tesla would ship between 80,000 and 90,000 cars this year, almost double the number of cars it managed to ship in 2015. But due to a slow ramp up on Model X production, as well as other things, Tesla was well below par for Q1 and Q2, delivering just under 30,000 cars in total. In Q3, however, Tesla managed a massive 24,500 cars, leaving just over 26,000 to deliver in Q4 in order to hit the low end of that lofty target. Given production is supposedly ramping up and demand for both Model S and Model X remains high, it seems that, save for some unforeseen catastrophe, delivery and production figures for 2016 may just help Tesla reach its rosy goal of turning a profit by the end of the year. A company struggling somewhat to deliver cars right now, though, is Audi, which admitted this week that it's cancelled all future production of its R8 e-tron electric sports car, after just 100 have been ordered over the last two years. The car, which Audi first flirted with making way back in 2009, has had something of a tumultuous history, going through several on-again, off-again production promises before finally becoming a special order production vehicle in 2014. But despite an improved battery pack that gave it a range of 280 miles per charge on the NEDC test cycle, and of course its beautiful design, the Audi R8 e-tron failed to get much in the way of custom, leading Audi to claim that it was simply too ahead of its time. If I'm honest though, it's deluding itself. The R8 e-tron's $1 million price tag and sub Tesla Model S performance kind of sealed its fate. Sorry Audi, you lost that round. Just about a year after its non-plug-in fourth-generation Prius launched around the world, Japanese automaker Toyota has begun its official Prius Prime plug-in hybrid launch campaign by announcing official US pricing and fuel economy ratings. Designed as its own standalone model and not simply a Prius with a plug, the Prius Prime is significantly different to the Prius plug-in hybrid it replaces. Aside from a few tweaks in its design and interior cabin layout, there is an included a new dual-motor drive system that can convert the power found in the Prius Prime's 8.8 kWh lithium-ion battery pack into an EPA-approved 25 miles of range without causing the gas engine to kick in, as well as an EPA-approved 54 miles per gallon combined when driving on gasoline power alone. Priced from $27,100 before incentives, the entry-level Prius Prime actually only costs about $2,000 more than the entry-level Prius after incentives, which means it could be a really good choice for those who want a plug-in car but can't afford a more expensive all-electric model. We gave you Tesla Q3 delivery estimates at the start of the show, and now it's time for some more news from Tesla in the form of two announcements scheduled over the next month, where Tesla is expected to launch a couple of new products. The first, due next week, is something of a mystery, but we're expecting it to have something to do with Tesla's lineup of electric vehicles, since the second event, a joint Tesla Solar City event on October 28 will be the unveiling of a brand new solar roof product with Tesla Powerwall 2.0 integration. And if that wasn't enough, Tesla also announced this week that the official shareholder vote on the Tesla Solar City merger will take place on November 17th, despite a growing number of court cases Tesla is finding itself fighting on the matter. Whatever the outcome of that vote next month, however, the next few weeks are going to be very busy for Tesla indeed. So watch this space. 
When it comes to electric vehicle charging infrastructure, it's undeniable right now that Tesla Motors and its company-run network of massively powerful supercharger stations are market leaders. But while Tesla has the most comprehensive, fastest, most powerful and most reliable charging network out there, it might be about to be overtaken, at least in terms of power and speed, by the electric charging system being developed by Porsche for its Mission E electric sports sedan. At least, that's what was implied last week by Porsche CEO Oliver Bloom when he told Top Gear magazine that the 800-volt super-fast charging system Porsche is working on for the Mission E will also work with a Tesla electric car with an appropriate adapter. Porsche's system, about twice the power of the current Tesla supercharger, will be the fastest and most powerful charging system in existence if it makes it to market and Tesla doesn't change its supercharger tech much, which it probably will. But while Porsche says Tesla electric cars will work with its charging system, there's no word if Tesla will reciprocate with supercharger compatibility for the Mission E. I guess we'll have to wait to find out. Earlier in this show, we told you that the Audi R8 e-tron had been killed, and now it's time to tell you about the death of another model, the 24 kilowatt hour version of the Nissan Leaf S. Unlike the R8 e-tron, however, this entry-level Nissan Leaf S is living on with a larger capacity 30 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack unveiled last year for the Nissan Leaf SV and Nissan Leaf SL, as well as rapid charging and 6.6 kilowatt onboard charging as standard. Sadly, this switch does make the entry-level Leaf a little more expensive, 32,450 before incentives, but it does give the Leaf S the same 107 mile EPA approved range as its siblings. As a retrofitting the larger pack into older cars? Nissan says it's not possible at the current time, but it promises it's still evaluating the possibility for the future. In case you didn't know, German band BMW has been busy celebrating its centenary this year by releasing a series of concept vehicles which it says look forward to the next 100 years of the company and what its products will look like. So far, we've seen Vision Next 100 concepts from the BMW Mini and Rolls-Royce car brands, but this week BMW's motorcycle division unveiled the Motorrad Vision Next 100 motorcycle, a self-balancing zero-emissions bike that you control with your eyes and which is so safe to ride that you won't need a crash helmet or protective gear. That's something of an incredible claim, and frankly, it reminds me a lot of the light cycle from Tron. But while the motorcycle is cool to look at and has plenty of neat features, like a body that changes shape to ensure you don't ever fall off, every ounce of my fibre thinks it will be dull and boring to ride. Sorry guys, make me a fully electric BMW GS Dual Sport and we'll talk. You can even give it advanced crash avoidance features, but I'm still going to wear my lid. Thanks. Talking of autonomous advanced vehicle features, it seems there's growing pressure building on California automaker Tesla to rename its autopilot semi-autonomous vehicle feature, or at least to ensure that more steps are in place to make sure that drivers don't abuse it. First up, the state of California's DMV isn't happy about Tesla's use of the word autopilot, since it says there's an implication that the car is fully autonomous when using that mode. And half a world away in Germany, Tesla's coming under similar pressure from the government there too, with German officials saying the system is being abused by drivers far too often. The solution? Put more safeguards in to make sure that autopilot is a feature that drivers can't take any advantage of in any shape or form. And Germany's Federal Motor Authority has even written a letter to each and every Tesla Model S and Tesla Model X owner offering them warnings of the consequences of not following Tesla's own advice on proper operation. I guess we'll have to wait and see if that small proportion of irresponsible owners take note or not, or if they'll spoil it for everyone else and force a ban of some sort. Watch this space. You might not realize this, but when it comes to sales of vehicles with a plug, German brand BMW has the highest ratio of plug-in to non-plug-in sales of any automaker out there that isn't Tesla. And as we found out last week, that's likely to get even better in the not-too-distant future, with the news that BMW has finally greenlit an all-electric Mini for production alongside a brand new all-electric SUV. As those who have watched this show for any time will know, BMW has been procrastinating on which car to electrify next for some time, and its executive board even skipped the Paris Auto Show so they could hammer out the final details. Now that the decision has been made, we can look forward to hearing more on both cars in the coming months. 
Of course, this isn't the first time we've seen an electric Mini. BMW built and leased limited numbers of an electric Mini as part of its development program of the BMW i3, but the chances are its first mass production electric Mini will feature an i3-derived drivetrain and battery pack placement, far better than the let's replace the rear seats with batteries that the Mini E had. From electric now to diesel, specifically the news that pretty much all US owners of Volkswagen TDI cars affected by the Dieselgate emission scandal have opted to sell their cars back to Volkswagen rather than have the company fix their car's faulty emission system. While this solution is going to be quite expensive for the automaker, it needs to pay each customer the market value of their car as if Dieselgate hadn't even occurred, it does mean that the emissions belching cars will be removed from the nation's roads, something that's good for everyone. Will those customers go on to buy plug-in vehicles instead? Well, that's unlikely, but we're hopeful at least some Volkswagen customers will go to look at cleaner, greener plug-in models as the ideal replacement for their diesel-burning buybacks. If you're one of the affected, I'd love to know in the comments below what your next car is going to be. And finally, you know that we cover all sorts of forms of zero emission transportation here on Transport Evolved, from bicycles to cars, buses to trains. But this week, we're finishing with a first for our show, an all-electric helicopter built by Tier 1 Engineering. The helicopter, powered by an advanced lithium-ion battery pack made by former electric motorcycle company Bramo, made its maiden test flight back at the start of the month, and seems to be quite successfully flying around the airfield where it was being tested. Right now, the helicopter has a range of about 30 nautical miles, or 20 minutes flight time, but eventually the team behind the program hope to develop an electric helicopter that can fly for 150 minutes and still have 30 minutes of reserved fly time to spare. Despite the current limitations of the prototype, however, I still think it's damned cool. So well done to all involved. Well, that's your lot for today. As always, thanks for joining me, but please don't forget to leave your reactions and thoughts to the stories we covered in the comments below, as well as giving us a thumbs up and a share if you liked it. And if you didn't, give us a thumbs down and tell us why, because otherwise we can't improve. Don't forget that you can follow us on Twitter at Transport Evolve, read our past and current articles at transportevolve.com, or check out our YouTube channel for our latest video updates, including our recently reintroduced Thought of the Day shows. And if you liked what you saw today, please consider keeping us independent and impartial by supporting our Patreon crowdfunding campaign from as little as $1 per month over at patreon.com forward slash Transport Evolved. We're just tipping the scales at $1,050 per month, which after my expenses becomes my sole salary. So I'm very appreciative of your help. Can't donate? Don't worry. Just spread the word, retweet our posts on Twitter, and make sure you tell your friends about our YouTube channel. As always, I'll try to be back next week with another roundup of the latest Transport Evolved news. So all that's left for me to say is I'm Mickey Gordon-Bloomfield. Have a fantastic weekend. And until next time, Keep evolving!